Yo guys, what is up? My name is Joe Croft and I have an absolutely crazy and exciting video for you guys today. Along with a story on how I got so carried away with one Minecraft project, I accidentally built the world's largest custom-made survival map featuring aspects of an MMORPG. This new multiplayer survival world is exclusive to mc.jerocraft.net and let me tell you, it is just absolutely insane. Featuring everything from custom biomes, stunning landscapes, transformed structures, custom villages, elaborate dungeons. I mean, you can venture into the deep dark labyrinth or explore the many massive transformed caves. All this comes together with hundreds upon hundreds of custom builds from ancient ruins to giant fossils. And if you still don't think I've absolutely lost my mind, well, I've also created over 500 custom items using a command block. And that includes everything from collectibles, legendary artifacts, custom potions, mounts, enchant books, and yes, even quest items for over 100 quests I hand wrote myself. All this while hiring developers to implement a leveling system, in-game currency and to basically expand on the project further. I mean obviously there is an absolute ton of content to get through but I have one goal with this video and that is to absolutely blow your mind with one of the most elaborate and most ambitious Minecraft projects this channel has ever seen and hopefully by the end of it all providing you the player with a free to play survival experience like never before. So guys without further ado let's begin today's epic Minecraft adventure. Now in the beginning there was nothing and I mean absolutely nothing. I had no intentions of even making this video. It all started with a simple request to update the server to 1.18. Like honestly the original plan was just to grab a random default Minecraft seed and call it a day. Which is absolutely crazy to think now that I'm sitting on over 2000 hours worth of footage that somehow I have to edit into a video. Please send help. Please subscribe. Now this brings us to phase one, the landscape. Normally I would use a program like World Painter to create some crazy custom landscapes. But when it comes to designing a multiplayer massive survival map, World Painter is just not going to be good enough. The distribution of resources isn't really that great. There are no randomly generated structures. And if it's not done right, you can end up with just massive open plains that can honestly be just a bit boring to explore. So instead, we're going to be using a custom data pack called Terralith to randomly generate an improved version of Minecraft 1.18. Now as we all know, the Caves and Cliffs update was already pretty epic, but this new world generation takes it to a whole new level of crazy. As of right now, the server map covers a region of over 46 billion blocks. Yes, billion. That is almost half a million chunks for you guys to explore. I know this sounds crazy, but it literally took me an entire 24 hours to fly across the entire world just so that I could reveal the map and know exactly what I was working with. Now obviously I can't show you the entire world map because that would defeat the purpose of this whole adventure but just know that this world is just absolutely incredible we have Siberian tiger forests Yellowstone mountains giant ice glaciers beautiful colored trees and even volcanoes just to name a few and even if we head underground, I mean it is just as spectacular, featuring the usual cave systems that Minecraft has to offer, but on a whole new level, with some additional biomes like the giant mushroom caves and even some of these beautiful yet creepy frostfire caverns. Now I must remind you, I still had no intentions of making a video, but here we are at the center of this incredible map which features this beautiful amethyst forest. So I thought to myself, I'll just build a small campsite. I mean, all I knew at this point was that the spawn was going to be protected by a 250 block radius. So I built a few roads leading north, south, east and west. This was just to give players a rough guideline on how far they have to travel before reaching the wild, where of course players will be free to build, explore and plunder. But I soon realized that maybe, just maybe, if I built an epic looking spawn, it would make for a pretty epic looking video. Little did I know what I was about to get myself into. 
So I jumped onto a super flat world and began development of practically an entire city, building a selection of different shaped houses that I could later position throughout the build. I used a pretty interesting combination of blocks for the roof, just because I thought it would match perfectly with the colors of this custom biome. I was really going for a peaceful, welcoming, fantasy themed city. And what you're watching right now is around 24 hours worth of pure building. I introduced the new house designs, repositioned the campsite to the outer regions of the city, and pretty much decorated the entire area with all kinds of final details, introducing bridges, roads, farms, windmills, and just tons and tons of plants as well as custom trees. Now after all the hard work, the village turned out looking quite nice, but then the word castle decided to creep into my brain, and honestly I just could not help myself. I noticed this extra plot of land that I thought would make the perfect place for a mighty fortress. So I started off with some very basic framework, and then proceeded to detail every single inch of the castle, building up the roads leading to the entrance, designing the courtyards, and just simply making sure that everything looks as perfect as possible, giving the player some bonus areas to explore explore while they hang around spawn. So honestly, I think the positioning for the castle could not be better. The fortress just overlooking this peaceful village, not to mention the castle is just absolutely massive. Now we're already around 50 hours into building the spawn. At this point, we might as well just go all in. I decided to build a giant symbolic statue, a symbol of adventure, accomplishments and I don't even know, dude, I'm just making this up as we go along. There was definitely a lot of mistakes behind the scenes, but in the end, I completed the design based on the Alliance foot soldiers from World of Warcraft. I have to admit, yes, I got super carried away with the sheer scale of this statue. And I know it's difficult to show on video, but if we compare this statue to some of my older creations, you can definitely see that this is by far the biggest statue I've ever built. Now you might just think I'd be done building the spawn by now, but then I had a thought about whether or not we should have player versus player enabled on this world. But I soon realized that this would most probably ruin the experience for a lot of people. So instead, right across from the spawn, I decided to build a giant Colosseum style battleground, where players will be able to take part in duels and fights for some glorious treasures. Honestly guys, I could have made an entire video on the spawn alone, which took me around 3 weeks to build. But as you can tell, it's been 4 months since my last video and I just had a bunch of ideas pop into my beautiful, glorious brain. Dude, I am going to absolutely lose my mind with this video. So with the spawn finally complete and out the way, we can officially begin the third phase of this project, a world of treasures. It all started with the simple idea of just scattering some basic treasures across the entire world. Once again, we're back to a point where I had no intentions of including this into the video. It was just supposed to be a small hidden added bonus. Now these basic treasures can be anything from just finding some apples lying next to a tree, a pile of coal next to a cave entrance, or just simply a lost abandoned toolbox. I mean, this is just about as basic as this project is going to get, but there are pretty much hundreds upon hundreds of treasures evenly scattered across the entire world. Now one really cool feature about finding any build or treasure on this map is that they all come with a special treasure hunters token. These hidden tokens are just for those players who really love the treasure hunting aspect of the game. It's basically just a simple way of keeping track of every single treasure you find. You can simply just collect the tokens, show them off to your friends for whatever reason, and simply just find out how many treasures are yet to be found. They also come with their very own unique descriptions just to give the treasures a bit more context. I pretty much just wanted to make the world feel as immersive and fun to explore as possible. Now after adding tons upon tons of basic treasures, I was soon utterly consumed by what I like to call Builder's Rampage. Seeing as the map is over 500,000 chunks in size, I soon realized that without some decent builds, the world is going to start to feel relatively empty. So I began introducing even more treasure locations, this time building small campsites, towers, abandoned buildings, and pretty much any smaller sized builds that I could think of. It's important to note that I want this project to feel relatively vanilla 
la Minecraft. In other words, adding giant temples filled with diamond blocks and overpowered items is definitely not very practical. And honestly, I want to make sure that the world is actually well balanced. Now even though I'm trying my best to keep the builds relatively simple, I do have to admit, each and every single new treasure location just seemed to be getting more and more elaborate as I progress throughout this project. And trust me, we have not even got to the good stuff yet. But at this point, I began phase 4 of this crazy world, with the introduction of custom made items. After learning how to create those treasure hunter tokens, I was seriously completely addicted to making custom items. I literally spent an entire three weeks designing hundreds upon hundreds of unique items, from all kinds of armor sets to weapons, potions, enchant books, fun items, collectibles, and yes, even those useless items. Even though it's a really simple concept, I just love the idea of finding unique items that offer some sort of backstory, just to make the world feel that extra bit more captivating. Now guys, I only wish I could show you every single item I've made, but to be fair, this could probably take years. So just feel free to pause the video at any moment now to see which item is best for you. Let me know what you got in the comments below. But I can't stress enough how much effort went into making each and every one of these items. The name, the design, the description, not to mention each treasure location has between 1 and 10 custom items, if not more, depending on the size of the build. Each treasure was also designed to match with whatever build you may come across. Once again, I just really wanted to make the world feel as immersive as possible. So whether it's just a lost epic trident right at the bottom of the deepest darkest ocean, or even just a simple broken short sword amongst the ruins of some lost ancient tower. I mean, it might just be a useless item, but at least it makes the world feel much more alive and fun to explore. Now to give you a few examples, here we have this absolutely perfect cave entrance which is literally surrounded by four villagers. I don't know, just a random fact, but I thought this would make the perfect place for a potion brewer's cavern. This was one of my favourite builds, at least of the smaller scale projects. Of course, every single build comes with its own interiors, but best of all, if you know exactly where to look, you might just find some of those custom items we mentioned earlier, like this potion of extraordinary leaping. Uh, yeah, this potion may cause severe injury. I did warn you, so please don't sue me. Although I do have to say, some potions are completely mysterious, like this unknown potion or this explosive fungal potion. So just be warned, you, you may never know exactly what you might get. And if you're lucky enough, you might just find the Wand of the Wicked, which literally turns your enemies into a hurling ball of fire. <laughs> Now I know what you might be thinking, what happens if someone finds the builds and treasures before I do? Well you don't have to worry about this because pretty much every single build is protected by a small radius and we've implemented loot timers on every single build. The way it works is pretty simple, depending on how rare the treasure is will depend on how often it will respawn. In other words, common treasure can take just a few hours to respawn, while legendary treasure can take up to a hundred hours to respawn. I know it sounds like a crazy amount of time, but trust me this is the best way to prevent players from constantly farming the same treasure. Either way there are plenty of places to explore and treasures to be found so you don't have to wait around 4 days on the same build just to get a copy of the same item. Trust me just go out and explore there is plenty to do and plenty to see. Now you may have already noticed that a lot of these builds also come with these really cool custom made blocks. These are simply retextured player heads and believe it or not, we finally managed to implement this into the looting system. Which means you can now actually take the player heads with you and use them to decorate your base or just wear them as a trophy to showcase your most epic discoveries. I mean, I pretty much spent three days scavenging across thousands and thousands of player heads just to be able to collect some of the best textures and use them throughout the project. 
Now this is where things start to get a little out of hand. I mean, my brain works in mysterious ways and it now somehow believes that the landscape is no longer good enough, which brings us to phase five, player housing and landscaping. Now each player that does join the server will be entitled to a 20 by 20 protected plot of land, which can later be expanded on by using in-game currency obtained from completing quests. But most importantly, I wanted to provide you guys with some absolutely crazy places to build your base. Now I know the landscape is already quite spectacular but you know after adding some custom rocks and trees around the entire world I soon realized that I might as well just transform entire freaking biomes <laughs> this is getting ridiculous now to be fair my main priority is to transform the emptier looking biomes like this grassy flatlands that can potentially use a bit of work just by adding some more trees rocks as well as even some paths and bridges can really enhance that sense of adventure and exploration And soon enough, I found myself in the frozen wastelands to the north of the map. And well, I just thought this looks incredibly bland and boring. So I quickly jumped onto a super flat world and decided to build, honestly, some of the largest Minecraft ice spikes you're probably ever going to see in a Minecraft video. I mean, just take a look at the sheer scale of this thing. So I pretty much jumped back into the world and used them to transform this entire ice biome. I mean, I just absolutely love the look of this. The biome itself is pretty massive, so this definitely makes for a huge upgrade to the map. Now speaking of empty looking biomes, the ocean is about as massive and empty as it can get. No offense to Minecraft Aquatic. So I decided to throw in some volcanic tropical islands. Now this was actually a lot more challenging seeing as I had to empty out an entire section of the ocean just to make room for some of these islands. But that's not even the worst part because I also noticed that aside from the mushroom caves, there weren't really any mushroom biomes on this world. So once again, I emptied out an even larger section of the ocean just to make way for this absolute absolutely crazy looking biome that comes together with massive rock formations, bridges and of course some colourful giant mushrooms. Now obviously it doesn't end there because I soon started experimenting with custom rocks and found that stacking the rocks on top of each other actually looks pretty epic. So you're definitely going to see a lot of transformed biomes featuring some of these stacked rocks. One of my favorites by far is of course the giant boulder valley. Now I know this may be a little excessive, but honestly this is a world all about adventure and fantasy. So how can you not just love some of these giant stacked boulders surrounded by rivers and beautiful pine trees? Once again, I was utterly consumed by yet another endless dark void of building, creating all kinds of crazy rock formations. I was just suddenly obsessed with this idea of creating a unique alternative to the usual mountains and cliffs that you would see in standard Minecraft. It's definitely going to be interesting to see what players are going to do with some of these biomes, seeing as all the new landscape upgrades are completely unprotected, meaning you can build, destroy, or even try to claim as much land as possible in order to build your your base. Now do I even have to mention I transformed literally an entire Mesa biome and yes as you can tell I had a bit of an obsession with giant rocks but at this point it was time to move on to bigger greater things and after building my first few fossils I once again spiraled out of control and ended up building giant and I mean massive fossils fossils of long lost giants that once roamed this world. Honestly I have no idea where I'm going with this but one thing's for certain you're definitely never going to run out of bone meal. I mean I literally literally built a giant dragon skull surrounded by cliffs and tall evergreen trees. Now why I spent two months building giant fossils is beyond me, but man do they look absolutely insane, I just could not help myself. And after creating a ridiculous amount of upgrades across the entire world, I soon found myself right at the edge of the map, coming face to face with this ugly and just unrealistic looking barrier wall. Look, let's be honest, I just don't like the look of this, it surrounds the entire map, and my brain has just decided to go full on Game of Thrones on this. Oh boy, I, 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 this is a terrible idea. <laughs> 
Okay, so look, I know this is a bit hard to believe, but I just surrounded the entire 500,000 chunk map in the world's largest ice wall ever built in the history of Minecraft. This very ice wall starts off at bedrock level and reaches Minecraft's new max build height of over 300 blocks. Now, obviously, I had to use commands to speed up the process, but even then, this still took me over six weeks to build. The best part is that most of the biomes surrounding the edge of the map are mostly ocean, snow, as well as ice covered biomes so at least the wall blends in nicely with the rest of the project honestly guys it does not get any crazier than this and I'm not going to lie to you I'm really starting to feel burnt out with this project but if for some reason I still haven't convinced you to press that subscribe button well let's just say my brain just can't stop building I mean look, there's an entire underground world waiting to be explored, so as if spending hundreds of hours building wasn't enough, I soon found myself doing the exact same thing all over again. It all started relatively simple with the transformation of some basic caves, all done while implementing those treasure hunter tokens, unique treasures, custom blocks and all the rest. But that didn't really last very long because soon enough I found myself building entire dungeons. So I pretty much transformed some of the largest caves on the map into massive elaborate dungeons, all which offer their own unique challenges, hidden secrets, along with powerful mobs defending them. I built everything from huge demonic looking caverns filled with skeletons and powerful artifacts to the ruins of a lost ancient city buried deep under the roots of this dying world tree. Some challenges won't be as easy, but with just a bit of skill and some basic planning, you will be well on your way to finding some of the rarest items in the entire game. But guys, nothing, and I mean nothing, will be as challenging as the Deep Dark Labyrinth. Found only at bedrock level, this vast and complex set of rooms and corridors features some of the most powerful mobs in the game, together with some of the most challenging obstacles. From utterly confusing twists and turns, to hidden rooms and mysterious challenges, every inch of this maze is entirely unique and spans across over 200 blocks in all directions, making this one of the largest and most elaborate challenges I've ever created. I mean, if I were you, I would definitely come prepared this maze is unforgiving and with just one wrong step you'll be falling straight down into the endless abyss. Even after seven months of excruciating hard work, somehow I was still not satisfied. I mean this world is massive and I just had to make sure there was plenty for you guys to explore. So once again I jumped back onto this empty world and began designing some custom built mob spawners. By first designing each individual room, corridor and all the individual segments, I was then able to create my very own sort of randomly generated structures, pretty much like putting together a set of oversized puzzle pieces. Now the thing is, in order to actually paste the mob spawners underground without actually destroying the landscape or completely engulfing them in stone, I first had to fill the mob spawners with yellow terracotta, paste them underground and then remove the terracotta once again. This was an incredibly tedious and time consuming task, but nonetheless my brain decided to do the same thing all over again, this time building my very own custom made mine shafts. Now what I love about the mineshaft is you can actually access them from above ground. All you have to do is find one of these campsites and you'll be able to descend and discover some of the many custom built rooms, mob spawners and of course find some of your basic treasure. Now the crazy part is I built over 100 of these mini dungeons and scattered them across the entire world, each and every single one of them being 100% unique in its own way. To top it all off I even designed custom built villages, all featuring a fresh new design which all come together with complete interiors, treasures and of course a mighty fortress. Now I was never planning on adding any legendary artifacts, but seeing as you've made it this far into the video, I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. Somewhere on this map I've hidden 11 
giant obsidian structures buried in almost impossible to find locations. But if you do manage to find and break into one, you will be able to obtain one of just 11 legendary artifacts that only you can ever own. Which means that once these artifacts have been looted, they will be gone forever. Honestly guys, there is so much content I haven't even covered in this video. It's been over a year of planning and hard work for just a single YouTube video, all in the hopes of blowing your mind and providing you with a free-to-play adventure of a lifetime. So with that said, I proudly present to you the world's largest custom-built survival hybrid MMO RPG. My son. A terrible darkness has returned to our world. As before, it seeks to annihilate everything that we hold dear. I go to face it, knowing I may not return. I now believe, as you do, that peace is the noblest aspiration. To preserve it, you must be willing to fight.